Good morning. Please state your name for the court and spell your last name for the record. Hi, my name is Devin Del Sesto. That's D E L S E S T O. Tell us what you do for a living, Mr. Del Sesto. Well, I'm a bellhop at the biggest casino around town. You know, the Black Bear. Uh, Mr. Avery Bancroft is my boss. Or Miss, sorry. So, what does a bellhop actually do? Well, really, what don't I do? Uh, I carry luggage, uh, I valet cars and help deliver food. Uh, I pretty much help run the casino, but my paycheck definitely doesn't say so. You mentioned Avery Bancroft is your boss. Now, who is Avery Bancroft? Well, like I said, she's my boss, and she's also the owner of the Black Bear. And she was proposing to the Gambling Commission for a second casino license. Mr. Del Sesto, how do you know about this proposal? Well, I overheard her talking about it a few times. I wasn't being nosy or anything, but I happened to be at the right place at the right time. Tell us exactly what did you hear about this proposal? Well, it was February 16th, and... Objection, Your Honor. This question calls for uh, an answer that's more prejudicial than it is appropriate. Uh, Your Honor, I think that goes more towards weight than admissibility. I don't think this calls for any prejudicial value. And furthermore, it has to be substantially more prejudicial than it is from the. Your Honor, may I ask a question? Mr. Del Sesto does not, cannot testify to the court who Ms. Bancroft was on the phone with. He just overheard her talk about a proposal. Ms. Bancroft is a businesswoman who talks about different proposals at different times. And Mr. Del Sesto testifying about um, relating that to. Ms. Ms. Bancroft trying to bribe somebody is 100% more and substantially more prejudicial than it is probative. May I respond? Yes. This is not substantially more prejudicial than it is probative. He's talking about a proposal that he heard Ms. Bancroft talking about. And that is relevant for the jury to hear in today's court case. Oh. Uh, Mr. Del Sesto, what did you hear about this proposal that Ms. Bancroft was talking about? Well, it was February 16th. And I was speaking to Miss Bancroft, and I heard her get a call on the phone. And I heard her say, thanks for calling me back. Uh, I'm putting together a proposal, and I just want to get it done. If you're for sale, I'm willing to pay the price, whatever it is. I just want to get it sorted out. Mr. Delsesto, do you see Avery Bancroft here in court today? Yes, she's sitting on the end with the glasses and brunette hair. Let the record reflect the witness has correctly identified Avery Bancroft as the defendant. Mr. Del Sesto, you mentioned the Gambling Commission. Uh, do you know who's on the Gambling Commission? Well, I know Chase Covington is on the Gambling Commission. He comes to the casino with it, uh, which I like because I get the ballet of BMW. <laughs> Mr. Del Sesto, I want to focus on Avery Bancroft and Chase Covington. Have you ever seen them together? Uh, yes, I remember one of the first times was on April 13th. Tell us about the date of April 13th. Well, I was just getting off work, and I saw we had a delivery to room 312 for a fancy bottle of wine and a plate of cheese. And the food staff was pretty swamped, so I decided to help them take it up. And when I got there, I was met by the head of security at the door, and when I got in, there was some sort of meeting going on. Did you know who was in this meeting? Well, I saw Mickey Keenan, uh, Miss Bancroft, my boss, uh, her assistant, Corey Hyde, and Chase Covington. Did you ever hear what was being discussed in this room? Well, when I entered, I saw Miss Covington, or Mr. Covington, had an old, dirty briefcase sitting next to him, and he was gesturing to it, saying, I'd like a new one of these if you catch my breath. Uh, Mr. Del Sesto, what happened after this meeting? <laughs> well, a few days later, I was going through Mr. Ban Miss Bancroft's mail, which is just another one of the things I do at the casino, and I saw she had a package. And when I opened it, it was a briefcase that looked very similar to um, Mr. Covington's, only in much better condition. What did you do with this briefcase? Well, I took it up with Mr. Ban Ms. Bancroft's mail and left it on her desk. But the next day, I didn't see her with it. I saw Mr. Covington with it. How did you see Mr. Covington with this briefcase that you opened? Well, I had just gotten off work uh, the next day, and I heard that there was a VIP or a celebrity in the VIP room. And that's pretty exciting for me because I like to meet famous people. <laughs> and I went through and I didn't see any celebrities. I just saw Miss Bancroft and Mr. Covington. 
and there were the briefcases. These briefcases you saw in the VIP room, describe them to the members of the jury. Well, Mr. Covington had the briefcase that he had brought to that meeting. Uh, it was old and dirty, but Miss Bancroft had the briefcase I had delivered to her, the new one that looked similar but was in better condition. But later on, I saw Mr. Covington walking out of the lobby, and he was carrying the briefcase that I delivered. What day did you see this happen? That was April the 16th. Mr. Del Sesto, on April 16th, did you see Mickey Keenan around when Avery Bancroft and Chase Carvington were together? Uh, no, I did not. Mr. Del Sesto, while working at the Black Bear Casino, did you ever hear Mickey Keenan threaten Avery Bancroft in any way? No, I always thought that Miss Keenan was a nice person. She helped me pick out a present for my girlfriend. Did you ever hear a Mickey Keenan tell Avery Bancroft to give Chase Covington money. No, but if uh, Mr. Bank or Miss Bancroft is giving out money, tell her that I need a new raise. Thank you, Mr. Delsa. So I have no further questions at this time.